Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Planet X News. It is April 14th, 2019. And ladies and gentlemen, earlier this morning, I was monitoring the Mauna Loa Observatory Telescope on top of a very high mountain in Hawaii. And I have to tell you, I was pretty thrown back at what I was able to observe there today. As I've said many, many times before, folks, you know, I, I keep getting all of these emails and people are pointing me to videos that, you know, other other Planet X YouTube channels are making and, um, you know, they're pointing or trying to point out uh, obscure objects in the clouds and referring to those objects as as planets. And I'm just going to reiterate one more time. There are no planets in the clouds. Uh, this object is more than 93 million miles away. So there's no way you're going to observe it with a cell phone camera or even a high-powered 35 millimeter camera or even a moderately uh, expensive telescope. Um, number one, if you're going to be looking at the sun with a telescope, uh, you're probably going to end up going blind when you look through the eyepiece. But anyways, the Mauna Loa Observatory um, they monitor the sun, and I've looked at uh, I've looked at their data many times before. Uh, you know, sometimes it's kind of sparse. Uh, there can be periods of time where there is no data there, and I've kind of you know fallen off. I really haven't taken a look at it for oh several weeks now, and I don't know what it was, but you know, early this morning. I don't know, that little voice in my head said, listen, Scott, you need to check out Mauna Loa and see if they captured anything. So I did just that, and they're actually going through and making some improvements on their data capture. And when you look at their data as they record it, um, this is from a ground-based observatory-style telescope. And again, it sits on a very, very high mountain. I, I forget what the elevation is. It's, it's very, very high there in, uh, in Hawaii. And uh, we've captured a few things on Mauna Loa before, but not too much. But this time, folks, wow, um, they've actually upgraded some of their software and uh, some of the way their data is released on their website. So again, you know, I don't know what it was. Something just told me to go ahead and check them out today. And I did just that. We've also been seeing a lot of missing data or data not being posted on several of the NASA websites that we monitor. And again, like I've said before, <laughs> You know, they're, they're probably watching everything that we do and what we find, and maybe they're trying to find ways to scrub that. Well, Mauna Loa is directly affiliated with NOAA, so it's really not a NASA telescope. And again, folks, this is a ground-based telescope on top of a mountain, and they monitor the sun. And what you're seeing on your screen now, my thumbnail, um, the big black circle, uh, that's just the occulter uh, inside of the telescope. It blocks out the intense rays of the sun. It also has a compass on it that you see uh, north, south, east, and west with a little arrow there. But over at the, well, I'd say about the four o'clock position, you see a massive object. Now, I recorded all of this on April 10th, 11th, and 12th. And that's where this data that I'm going to show you today 
that's where this data comes from. After that, there's nothing yet for the 13th or the 14th, and we're going soon into the 15th here. But this was absolutely amazing. Also, at the same time that I capture this object in a short piece of video that you're going to see in a few minutes, there's a very high possibility that we may have captured one of this uh, one of these um, Planet X moons or little subplanets. I, I really don't know what to call that this this object that uh, that I captured because you're going to see in a piece of the video you're going to see this large object that you're looking at right here. Uh, you're going to see it pass by the lower part of the sun and then right behind it you're going to see another smaller sphere come into the sun's corona. So I've been waiting for many, many years to try and capture these little subplanets or whatever they may be, moons. They could be smaller stellar cores. We really just don't know. But it was truly amazing what I've captured. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up the first video uh, that I put together of this new data and these new still shots. We're also going to be talking quickly about magnetopause reversals. Now, Mark over at the Blue Kool-Aid channel, uh, he did a video this morning, and it was in relation to these magnetopause reversals that were recorded back in 2012. And I remember these magnetopause reversals. I investigated them in 2012, 13, 14, 15, 16, and 2017. Now, listen, folks, they scrubbed the data. Uh, these were periods of time that ranged between 4, 8, and 12 hours of data that was missing. And later on, after we go through these new photographs, I'm going to explain to you why these magnetopause reversals occurred and why we may not see another one anytime soon. So let's go ahead and I'm going to go pull this video up. Let's jump out of the thumbnail here. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and pull this up. We'll listen to a little introduction here real quick. Now this is the uh, this is the Mauna Loa Observatory. And again, it sits high atop a mountain in uh, in Hawaii. And uh, matter of fact, I think last year and the year before it snowed up there, which is kind of odd. In Hawaii but again it is at a very very high elevation now what you're seeing on your screen right now I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, stop this right here what you're seeing is one of the the first observations that I made when I was watching their data now whenever they stream this data uh, they are recording this in real time meaning that telescope is directly pointed at the sun, and I've actually cropped this so I can fit it on my screen. But this telescope monitors the sun 24 hours a day. So it's recording all of this data in real time. And those data files are, are huge. And whenever you play it back, um, it, it goes, the timeline goes by so fast. We're talking milliseconds. It just zips by. And if you don't slow it down, you're definitely going to miss something. The human eye just can't detect things zipping by like that. So what I do is I record all of the data myself, and then I play it back in slow motion and I look for anomalies and sure enough today wow uh, in a course of uh, three days um, April 10th 11th and 12th 
I was able to capture this object moving around the sun. And just absolutely amazing what I've captured today. So you can see this object right here. I mean, it's just, it's, it's absolutely huge. And I'm going to go ahead and let this play to the next frame. Now, tomorrow, I'm going to be analyzing these photographs a little bit more. And I've done some color changes just to bring out the definition of this object. And again, you can see it. It's right between the 11 o'clock and 12 o'clock position on the occulter. And again, it's just absolutely massive. Now, on this photograph here, you see this object right about the 4 o'clock position. And I'm going to go ahead and just stop this real quick. And you see the object right here. I'm going to go ahead and just lower this down just a little bit. So you can see the object here. So this was the very next day. So again, remember, we're going through a period of 72 hours. The 10th, 11th, and 12th of April. And this is the data that I recorded. And again, bingo, you, you see this object right here. The other frame on the, uh, on the 10th, it was, excuse me, it was way up here. And then now we have it here in this diagonal pattern. And again, remember folks, that's what I've been telling you, that this object is orbiting the sun in a very, very tight uh, eccentric orbit. Okay. And it, and it, it kind of comes down below the ecliptic. And whenever we refer to the ecliptic, we'll just, let's just say it's, it's the center line between the sun, the upper part of our solar system, the bottom part of our solar system. So this object literally comes downward like this. And I do believe it has to travel below the ecliptic and then it loops back around. And its orbit is very, very tight now. Now, it wasn't always like that. And I'll get into more of that whenever we talk about the magnetopause reversals. I'm going to go ahead and let this play real quick to the next frame, and we'll see what we capture here. So again, here is another photograph. I blew this up. Let me go ahead and just uh, stop the video portion. And you could see uh, how large this object is. And, and this has to be the main host of this this uh, this Planet X system. I really don't talk about Planet X as its own system that much because, well, I've never been able to obtain that type of data. Uh, only one time in all of these years have I captured one photograph on the Cactus Coronagraph program that showed a larger object with several small objects around it. So I've never, I've never been able to absolutely prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that this object is not alone. But as time goes on and we, you know, continue to make these observations and continue to research this subject, eventually we're going to hopefully find and photograph this object with with its moons or its 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 subplanets whatever is orbiting around it i do believe in my own mind with my own thoughts i do believe this object does have other subplanets or moons orbiting with it we normally just don't see them um on the nasa spacecraft uh, like the Stereo and Sechi and Soho, just because of the view of the cameras. Now, this is, I'm going to go ahead and stop this real quick. This is another observation from uh, a different view from the Mauna Loa Observatory. And again, the big black disc that you see, that's the occulter blacking out uh, or blocking out the sun. Now, you see this little object right here, this small one here, and there also seems to be another one right here. Now, I'm going to be showing you some frames of video 
that are going to show this object literally appearing out of the sun's corona. But right before this object appears, another very large object races right through the sun's corona. And then this smaller object appears behind it. And we'll get to that piece of video. Today's observations is, is definitely getting me back on the track of thinking that, yes, for sure, this Planet X object is possibly a system, its own little mini solar system within our solar system, or, you know, similar to Jupiter with, with many, many moons orbiting around it. So I'm going to go ahead and continue this out so we can get to the next frame. And the next few frames are just what I've observed today on the, uh, the Mauna Loa. This is a close-up of it. You're looking at the, the black part up above. That's the bottom part of the occulter. And again, you can see it's, it's not, you know, a, a piece of dust on the lens of the telescope or anything of that nature because it literally moves within the video. And looking here, you know, you can definitely make out a small darker sphere here and this lighter sphere here. And again, we're going to be moving to a piece of video that, that literally shows this. Now, we're looking at the, uh, the photosphere on the Mauna Loa. Uh, this is the K coronagraph. And again, you can see this object, and this is, this is set up in black and white. And you can see it right there where the yellow arrow is, and it's passing in that diagonal pattern right underneath the sun. And it's now going to be going below the ecliptic. And we're actually going to see it on video. And here's a piece of it right here. So if you watch very carefully, let me go ahead and just, I'm going to go back just a little bit here. What I want you guys to do is whenever I restart this video footage, and you're going to see it more clearly. I, I, have, I have it slowed down. And that's something else. I had to slow this video footage down from Mauna Loa. I had to slow it down to 90%, meaning I had to take out 90% of the motion in order to capture this. Because again, this is recorded in a 24-hour format, and when they load it, um, it, it, it zips by so fast that if you don't slow it down, you're going to miss everything if, in fact, something is truly there. So I'll go ahead and start it, but I want you to watch right here. You're going to see that larger object zip by, and then you'll see the smaller subplanet or moon appear. Now, this smaller object is moving slower than the larger object, and, and you'll be able to detect that. So let's check it out. We'll go ahead and let that play. So you can see this other object is zipping by, and you'll see it come out of the corona. And again, I had to slow this down 90% enabled to or enabling me to uh to capture this and you could also see a smaller object right here but it's not very clear so watch carefully here it comes and then as it passes by it is trailed by this other object and again you could barely barely see this other one here. So we're not even going to worry about that because we don't have a clear observation of it. But this smaller object, it's definitely there. And again, the reason why it seems like it's suspended there is because I had to slow this down 90% in order for me to capture that larger object zipping by. So the speed that this Planet X object orbits the sun is very, very rapid, folks. Like I said, it makes a complete orbit around the sun uh, about 28 days, which is uh, the same as the orbit, or excuse me, the, uh, the rotation of the sun. 
So you watch very carefully. You see it right there in the side of your, uh, your screen. And then again, followed by this smaller object. And to me, this is, this is groundbreaking because I haven't captured anything like this before. We're always seeing just the, the one main Planet X object. We're never seeing uh, the main object with the smaller moons or subplanets, whatever they may be. So watch carefully. This is blown up. I mean, bingo, right there. There it goes. I have this piece of video set so you can see this multiple times. Check it out. I'm going to go ahead and just go back a few frames so you guys can see that again because I think that's pretty amazing. And I really was uh, caught off guard by the uh, by the larger object. I was able to spot the uh, the smaller subplanet or moon. Uh, I was able to spot that relatively quick. And I had to slow it down more and more and more because I said to myself, what in the hell was that big object that just zipped by the bottom part of the sun? <laughs> and um, I first played it back and I reduced the uh, the speed down to about uh, 60%, then 50%, then 40%. And I had to take it all the way down to just about a 10% speed, reducing it by 90%. But again, this is just absolutely amazing to see this uh, in, in a video format of this object zipping by. So this just goes to show us, you know, once again, that, uh, in fact, oops, in fact, let's zip all the way back out here. I'm going to go ahead and try to stop it right there. Hard to even capture this. There we go. Just leave it right there. Um, it was very, very hard to capture this uh, because of the the, the speed of the uh, of the video. But um, today was definitely a groundbreaking day in uh, in seeing this object in its its orbital path. And again, you know, there are other people out there that are telling you this and telling you that and, uh, you know, making up models and blah, 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 you know. I don't know where they get their information. I don't ever see any of them producing real observational evidence whenever we're talking about this Planet X object orbiting our sun. And the fact of the matter is, folks, look, I I've been doing this for more than 20 years as far as my research into Planet X goes. I've only actually been divulging what I know on YouTube since 2016. And the more and more I see um, what's happening now, uh, it's kind of disturbing because Many people do want to know about this subject matter. But before they get to Planet X News and they get to the real information, their minds are being littered with just total garbage. And that's kind of sad. And uh, I get, once again, I get so many of these emails, people pointing me to these other videos that are just made by whomever. And look, I don't want to go out there and just continue to criticize people. But um, when you send me the videos and you ask my opinion and I give you my opinion, don't get mad. You know, I, I, had, a, I had a few people that returned emails to me after I answered their questions. And, uh, you know, in, in the return email, you know, they're, they're blasting me 
because <laughs> what I told them about the video or the photographs is something that they just didn't want to hear. So what do you want me to do? You want me to lie to you? Do you want me to lie to you and tell you, oh, wow, that that video of, of a lens flare, oh, wow, that was absolutely fantastic. Oh, that video of this guy filming uh, clouds in the sky and say, saying that there's planets up there in the clouds. Oh, you want me to confirm that? Oh, look, folks, I'm just not going to do that. I'm not going to tell you that something is real just because that's what you want to hear. Or you may like that particular YouTuber, the person that's making the videos that may not know their ass from a hole in the ground when it comes to this subject, but they just want to make some cockamamie video and point things out that really aren't there. So, again, you know, I'm not trying to act arrogant or be arrogant or conceited or whatever these names that you people call me sometimes, but the facts are the facts. If you compare the evidence that I have shown over the years to what other people are out there trying to prove and show you, you will clearly see the difference and you won't leave those stupid comments uh, like like I've had over the last couple of videos. Um, I had one lady leave some really, really nasty and weird comment pertaining to uh, the flooding situation. Maybe she didn't listen to my video uh, the whole way through. Um, you know, I kept saying through that video that whether it be six inches of water or ten feet of water, um, these areas that will see flooding will be uninhabitable. You won't be able to do anything with that land. You won't be able to plant anything there. So again, you know, I don't know. Maybe sometimes these people get a bug up their ass. Maybe they're trolls. Who knows? Mm. But I think this was uh, definitely groundbreaking video data today. And uh, I was kind of... You know, I was kind of uh, wanting to show all of you this uh, as soon as possible, but I was uh, I was so tired. I had been up since uh, oh, about three o'clock in the morning, and that's when I started to observe this data. Um, over the course of the next couple of days, I'm going to go ahead and jump into this here real quick. We'll get into some screenshots here, but over the course of the next couple of days. Uh, I'm going to be analyzing these photographs even more. I haven't had a chance yet to put them through uh, this new photo enhancement program that I have. I'm going to be working on that first thing in the morning. But again, folks, you know, there's a big difference in looking at some lens flare photographs and looking at hardcore data coming from a massive observatory with state-of-the-art telescopes and computer technology. So, you know, it is what it is. So I'm going to be enhancing these photographs, and we could even zoom in a little bit here. And uh, again, that is, whew, man, that's absolutely amazing to see something like that. That's also a little scary, too, uh, to see the size of that. Uh, this is just a little bit of a filter change, so we can see this a little bit better. Pretty amazing. And like I said, uh, first thing tomorrow morning, I'm going to be taking a look at all these photographs. I'm going to be putting them through the uh, the new enhancement program. And, uh, I mean, there even looks like there's something kind of obscure right there. But it's not that clear. And I really only like to to deal in things that are absolutely, positively, 100% visible. And that damn thing right there, <laughs> it's visible. Let's take a look at the next photograph here. So, again, this is, I think, yeah, this is the next day. Uh, this is on the 11th. And you can see where the object was over here. It's now past here. 
And again, uh, this goes along with what I keep saying about how the object has a very eccentric orbital pattern around the sun. Once again, another truly amazing uh, capture. When I saw this data this morning, and I started to go through the photographs, and I started looking at them, and I have, um, well, I probably have one of the biggest databases of photographic evidence for Planet X that I know of. And uh, besides the, uh, the, the big observatory photograph that was captured back in 2017, showing that big blue stellar core, um, these objects today kind of gave me the chills. Uh, it's literally showing the, the, the true size of, of this object. It is just absolutely massive. And I, I, I can't help myself to wonder how powerful uh, this object is. And again, this is another different viewpoint. Go ahead and expand it just a little bit. Bring it down here and fill up the screen. And again, now I have captured this object before in this same position over here on the SDO, the Solar Dynamics Observatory. I captured it in late 2017, and uh, you know all of you have seen those photographs. What I'm going to do tomorrow, I am going to see if Mark from the Blue Kool-Aid channel wants to do a live stream and uh, we can get together and I can start and start showing you comparisons of what was captured in 2017 and 18 compared to what we're actually capturing here today because it's consistent and that's something that I look for. I look for consistency and it takes years to develop that consistency in your observational evidence. And I truly believe that that's what I have shown time and time again. The consistency of the location where this object can be detected. Now here's something else, folks. I've been going back and checking out the dates when I've made my most spectacular captures. And they've all been between March, April, May, June, July, and August, and September in a calendar year. Now, maybe that has to do with the Earth's uh, orbit and rotation around the sun and the different views that we would actually get from the space satellite cameras and now an observatory. So we'll see. You know, I'm still kind of working on that. And this is just, again, just another, another color change here. And I'm going to go ahead and zoom in because these are high definition photographs. You can see they don't pixelize. I could zoom all the way into that. Doesn't pixelize. So I can't wait later on tomorrow morning. I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and run these through the uh, the photo enhancement. See if I could bring out some more detail. But this shows you also how close this object is to the sun. At this point, it is literally in the sun's corona. That's amazing. That's amazing. And this will just go to show you that, yes, this object's magnetic field would definitely interact with the sun's magnetic field. So it is definitely affecting our sun and probably not in a good way. So I'm going to go ahead and jump out of here, and I wanted to touch on what uh, what Mark was talking about on uh, the Blue Kool Aid channel about the magnetic, um, or excuse me, the uh, the magnetopause reversals. Now I first detected this back in 2012, and this was the data 
that he was uh, he was actually getting into, and he was asking some questions. Uh, I, I sent some data over to him late this morning for him to take a look at, and uh, I commented on his video. And it did take a couple of years to figure out why this magneto pause reversal occurred because the first time that i detected it was in 2012 as you can see right here i've compared today the 15th to the 13th of march in 2012 that's when i first saw this magneto pause reversal and I was kind of flipped out whenever I saw it because I'm, I never saw anything like that. I never even heard of anything like that. And it was a good thing that I, I, I took some screenshots and I had to go back through, oh my Lord, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of photographs today to get back to this point because they scrubbed the data. See, you can't go back to the ISWA website and pull up this time frame because they deleted it yeah not only did they delete this in 2012 but i detected this same magneto pause reversal in 2013 14 15 16 and 2017 and i have a theory about what was occurring but I'm not the only one who has this theory. And if you look up and read about uh, a magnetopause reversal, there's not that much data out there, folks, because they literally try to hide this. Okay, because this should not happen. And this is very detrimental to the Earth when it does happen. Now, thank God when these magnetopause reversals had occurred, they weren't for really, really, really long periods of time, four, eight, 12 hours. So that literally exposes the Earth to all cosmic rays and all of those heavily charged particles, all of that solar radiation bombarding the Earth for that period of time with no protection. It's kind of like our condom, you know, you want to make a joke about it. But uh, as you can see here, this is for today, April 15th, 2019. Now you can see our bow shock right here, the magnetopause. This is in the right direction. So let's just say, for instance, this little zero right here, that would be the sun. So this is the, this is the way that the, uh, the Earth would be facing, daytime side, nighttime side. Now, in 2012, in March, we had this magnetopause reversal occur. And you can see, <clears throat> it's completely the opposite. It had flipped around and completely contorted. Now, there was a website. I did a complete video on all of this uh, throughout the years uh, of data that I had acquired. And there was a, a few websites that literally took, took my data, took my screenshots, and um, they used it on, on their websites. And I, I think they're still out there. But I took all of these multiple screenshots, I put all of this information together, and I put it into an article, and I put it into a few videos back in 2016 and 17, and, um, you know, just like anything on the internet, you know, they, they, they rob your data, and, you know, one, one, one website wrote up some data uh, related to Nancy Leader, and, uh, you know, that crazy lady with the Zeta aliens and the Planet X and the pole flip and all this other stuff, you know, and I'm like, oh, my God, here we go. But anyways, uh, again, this is what our magnetopause should look like, okay, facing this direction, not the opposite way.
So that, I just took that, uh, well, maybe about 30 minutes ago. Oops, let me get out of here. This is the uh, just a steel shot of what uh, I, I believe Mark was showing this. Uh, this is from 2012. And you can see it's completely opposite. And you can see the contortions of the magnetopause at that time. It completely reversed. Now I do have, here's another uh, shot of the reversal. And you can see the bow shock is completely 100% contorted. It's just, I'd, I'd have to say, completely destroyed at this moment in time. Here you go. Here's uh, I accidentally cut the uh, the the timestamp off, but this just goes to show you right here on 2012 uh, that contortion and that reversal. And you see this uh, this red area right here. That is, I would say. Let's just use this terminology. The hottest point of all of the heavily charged particles bombarding the Earth. And at this time, uh, this would have been bombarding the, the nighttime side of the Earth. And I believe this occurred for... Well, let me see if my memory kicks back into gear here. I believe this was a magnetopause reversal of about four to six hours, if I'm not mistaken. And then it went back to uh, it went back to normal. But again, we've seen this uh, we've seen this several times. Now, I am not the only one um, who has captured this. I know back in 2016. Uh, BP Earthwatch, Mr. MBB333, um, they reported on this. Um, BP Earthwatch was able to capture the data. And then as I think he went back to reobserve it, uh, that's when he found out, just like I did, that... Um, those bastards went back and they scrubbed the data. They deleted it. <clears throat> but he did the right thing and he recorded he recorded the data immediately. And I've made some mistakes not doing that. <clears throat> but I kind of know better now. But again, you know, still make some mistakes sometimes. And uh, you kind of take it for granted that they're just going to leave it up there. But when something that critical happens... Yeah, man, if we show it, they'll remove it. And that's exactly what they do. So getting, you know, getting into the reasons why this happened back in 2012, 13, 14, 15, and 16 and 17. Planet X was not in its tight eccentric orbit during those years. As a star moves in closer to another host star. It doesn't just zip in and uh, condense into a very, very tight orbit. It can take many, many years. It can take decades or centuries or thousands of years. It just all depends on those dynamics at that point in time. During 2012, in March, Planet X was already orbiting the Sun because we have the first orbital evidence in 2007, as I showed you folks about a week, two weeks ago. And uh, that was just absolutely amazing. So what I've done is I've taken a, a screenshot. You can see the date down here. This is actually March 19th. 2012, and this was uh, from Solar System Scope. And what we're talking about during this magnetopause reversal would be a magnetic portal connection. And that would place Planet X way out into the solar system, possibly even past Saturn. But it had already started its, its eccentric orbit. Now, at this point in time, 
in the solar system. Planet X would have had to have been right about here, just between Virgo and Leo, the two constellations. If you take a look at this, I'll zoom in here so you guys can see this a little bit better. The Earth would have been in direct alignment. Now, this is the back side of the Earth, the nighttime side. Planet X would have been facing the nighttime side of the Earth. Now, whenever you talk about magnetic fields, folks, the Sun's magnetic field reaches all the way to the outskirts of our solar system, many, many AUs away. Okay, so that's how powerful it is. So, Planet X at this point in time was probably several AU away from the Sun. However, its magnetic field is very powerful. And what, what occurred in 2012? What occurred was there was a magnetic portal connection between Planet X and the Sun. Where was the Earth? Right between the two. Now, what would happen to Earth's magnetic field or Earth's magnetopause? What would happen? It would reverse. It would collapse. The energy would collapse Earth's magnetic field temporarily as the orbit of planet X continued and Earth's continued, then that magnetic portal connection would have been broken and our magnetopause would have flipped back to normal. Now, this continued to occur as planet X's orbit, its eccentric orbit, started to decrease as the sun drew it in closer and closer and closer. So let's just follow my cursor here for a minute. This would be Planet X in 2012. This is what caused the, uh, the magnetopause reversal in 2012. As Planet X made its orbit, its orbit now gets tighter every year that goes by. 2013, okay, let's just assume it was here. We had another magnetopause reversal in 2013. As it came in closer, 2014, 15, 16. And as that orbit condensed, those magnetopause reversals continued. But now, Planet X is now in its very, very tight 28-day orbit. So, what I'm trying to say is there's a very, very high possibility that we may never see another magnetopause reversal. I hope not, because if we do, it's going to be possibly longer than four to six hours or four to eight hours. That would be very, very damaging to the Earth. That could be apocalyptic, okay? Uh, that could induce some catastrophic earthquakes. We're talking magnitude 9, 10 off the scale. Volcanic eruptions. Uh, hell, the earth can start splitting apart. <clears throat> you know, uh, its tectonic plates can really, really take some serious damage from, from that type of interaction. But I don't think that's going to happen. But again, hey, like the saying goes, never say never. But let's just hope to, uh, hope to God that doesn't happen. Um, something that did occur during this 2012 magnetopause reversal is you see Mars. Mars was jammed up right in there with the Earth. In 2012, right at this particular time, there was this massive, massive dust storm that was recorded on Mars. But nobody ever talked about it. It was absolutely wild. Now, some astronomers did talk about it. Uh, NASA really didn't divulge too much about it. Some YouTube channels did mention it. And I believe in 2016, this also occurred with Mars. So I just wanted to give all of you 
this new data today give you an explanation on the magneto pause reversal and i hope we don't see any more of these we shouldn't now there's also been some devastating weather folks across uh half of the united states once again uh major major tornadoes just blitzkrieging across uh the south uh, throughout texas alabama mississippi Already, you know, yesterday one town wiped off the map. Eight people have lost their lives. And this is what I keep mentioning about how our weather is going to get more and more intense. And it's going to happen very, very rapidly. And we're going to talk more about that tomorrow uh, during my live stream. And I'm going to gather some more data on what has occurred. Uh, we just went through a massive storm here in the Pittsburgh area. We already have uh, tens of thousands of people without power. So, again, you know, the weather is our worst nightmare. And as each month passes by into our spring and summer of 2019, you know, we're going to be able to gauge what we're going to be looking forward to in the years to come. So please, folks, be very, very careful with traveling in this weather. Make sure you have some type of, a, you know, of an emergency plan with you and your family and your loved ones. And make sure you have you know batteries, a flashlight, a little LED lantern. Make sure that you are somewhat prepared. Because again, the weather is going to be our worst enemy. I'll have more information for all of you tomorrow. And I'll probably hold a live stream, I don't know, maybe uh, sometime uh, late morning, early afternoon. It all depends on my schedule. But I'm going to be re-examining all of these photographs and these, uh, this data that just came from uh, Mauna Loa. And we'll go from there. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, I appreciate all of you being with me here tonight. Take care, be safe, and stay tuned to Planet X News. And don't forget, folks, join up with our private network. The link is in the description box under the video. Take care, folks. Be safe.